What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today we're going to talk about Elden Ring. That's right. Is Elden Ring too hard? No, it's Elden Ring is not too hard. Even before the buffs, Elden Ring wasn't too hard. Was it hard? Yes. Was it extremely, extremely hard? Yes, and yes. But the game's supposed to be, right? I don't understand why this was even a controversy. I don't understand how people could even leave it mixed reviews. It's a Souls game. These games are known for being hard. It's supposed to be hard. I just don't understand how gamers or people in general could have a problem with game difficulty. If you have a problem with the game's difficulty, then you probably shouldn't be playing it, right? Because part of the game itself, the gameplay experience, was designed by the developers to be a certain way. And if it was designed by the developers to be hard, that is part of the game. That would be like. To me, that, that would be the same as if I didn't like the music in a game, right? I didn't like the music, so I left a bad review. Well, the music, the music or the genre of the music is part of the game. Let's take Doom, for example. Let's say I, didn't, I, just, I don't like the Doom aesthetic or, you know, I don't like the Doom music, okay? The game is not meant for me. I just don't like, the, you know, the, the grunge, the, the, the metal grunge industrial type background music in Doom. I just don't, you know, I hate it. So I go and I review bomb Doom on, on Steam. That doesn't make any sense. The, the music, the Doom music is part of the gameplay experience. And then Elden Ring, dying is part of the game experience. The difficulty is part of the game experience. That's what makes the game so great. You can't, you can't just save. You, there, there are no save states. The game is a, is a continuous, continuous, you know, world. You save at the grace, your data is saved, but you don't make save states. In other words, it's not kind of, it's not like a Bethesda game where you could just save before you do everything. In Elden Ring, your choices have real time consequences in the real time. Your deaths matter in the real time. You can't just reload, a, you know, a save scum load right before you fought, you know, a Mesmer Knight or Mesmer or something like that, right? Now, they do have the Statues of America, and they do have the Summoning Pools, and they do have the Grace Points. Those Grace Spots are save spots, but you can't save a state of the game in them and then fight something and then reload every single time. If you die, you go back to the Grace or you go to the Statue of America, regardless. So it adds consequences, and it's a... It, it's a continuous world, right? And it adds consequences. In other words, let's say I, uh, you know, I attack an NPC or kill a merchant. There's no going back. You can't, you can't roll back the time. You know, it's, it's, it's there. You've, you've done it. You've done the deed. You've ruined the quest line. That's what's so good about it. Because in order to have an RPG where you have freedom, you have to be able to ruin the game. In other words, you have to be able to ruin quests. And in Elden Ring, you can ruin the quest. You can, you can do things and cut off certain quests. That's part of the difficulty of it. You can't just save before things. You can't just have save states and 100, 100 different save states 
or save at a certain point in time and then go back and branch in different sections, what you do has consequences and they matter. So as far as the dying, the dying is part of the entire continuous play style of Elden Ring. It's part of the whole, the whole ecosystem. You can't have one without the other. You just can't. So, is Elden Ring too hard? No, it's not too hard. Not at all. And it was extremely hard, especially being on, being on Next Game Plus 10, which I played Shadow of the Earth Tree on Next Game Plus 10. And it was absolutely brutal, but I loved it. And I knew what I was getting into when I bought the, when I bought the DLC. I knew what I was getting into. They should not put an easy mode in the game. The game should not have an easy mode. It just shouldn't. You know, I take that back. The easy mode is using the Mimic. They give you the Mimic for a reason. It helps you out a lot. And the point of Elden Ring is you can make the game as hard or easy as you want, specifically with your build. So you could do a no-hit playthrough. You could do a no-armor playthrough, fist only, swords only, whatever you want to do. You can kind of tune the experience to your difficulty with player choice, not by clicking a button in the menu. So that, that, that is also a good point that I should point out, is that you can control the difficulty of the game with player choice rather than just hitting a button in the menu. So no, there should not be an easy mode. No one should be reviewing this game based on difficulty. The difficulty in dying is part of the gameplay. The dying. The dying mechanic itself is meant to be done. You're meant to die in this game. It's part of the actual gameplay. It's one of the few games in modern times where dying is expected and almost encouraged to a certain degree. They want you to die in this game. Most games is kind of the opposite. Most games, they want to have a, you know, a negative structure to it to where you dying, you don't want to die. Or they completely remove the consequences altogether. Like I should say, most modern games have absolutely no consequences for dying at all whatsoever. Most modern games have absolutely no consequences for dying whatsoever. You could die over and over and over again, won't make a difference. And Elden Ring, when you die, it makes a difference because you had to progress to a certain point. You die, you get frustrated. Or you're dying at a boss over and over again, it's frustrating because he's getting you with the same attack over and over again. And you have to overcome that. But when you do overcome that, you get a greater satisfaction than you do in other games. And the point I'm getting to here is that it reminds me of NES games, okay? Like Castlevania or uh, like, you know, Ninja Turtles, uh, the first one that was really hard. It reminds me of like really hard NES games, okay? Like Kid Icarus and all those things. Uh, because dying was part of those, those experiences too, because the games weren't that long. So they expected you to die to keep the gameplay, you know, longer and they wanted you, you rented the games from the store. They wanted you to play the game longer, so dying was part of the gameplay. So in a lot of ways, Elden Ring reminds me of an NES game or, um, you know, an older style game where dying is part of the experience and you're not, you're not like expected. You're not expected to get through without dying. No one expects you to get through Castlevania you know, one without dying. You can, many people do, but you're not expected to, right? It, dying is part of that experience and you learn. So to me, the difficulty in Elden Ring and, and Shadow of the Earth Tree basically captures that same feeling people had when they played 2D NES games or SNES games. It captures that same feeling and frustration with bosses. It captures that, hey, a boss is a boss. And modern gaming, we started getting away from bosses, where bosses weren't much of a thing anymore, where they didn't pose too much of a threat, where it didn't matter if you died to them at all. But Elden Ring brought that back to the entire genre, to gaming completely. Elden Ring brought back bosses. It brought back the concept of, hey, you're going to die on bosses. You have to learn this boss's moveset. You can't just overpower it or save after every move. For example, you know, in a game like uh, like Bethesda, let's say it's Fallout New Vegas and you're fighting the Legate, 
you know, on, in Caesar's camp, you're fighting the leg at the last boss for, you know, when you're going through and uh, Caesar's your enemy, you're fighting Leggett. Okay, le- le- all right, you're fighting Leggett. You can literally save after every attack. You could save midway through the battle and change your strategy, right? You could just save and save and save and save your way through the battle. But in Elden Ring, you can't do that. You go to the battle, you need to learn, you have to learn the boss or you're going to die. You're not going to be able to get through that part of the game. Which they also included as part of the gameplay. Because a lot of times, if you get to a boss and it's too hard, you can go explore another area. You can go out and go explore another area. Again, player choice. They're giving you the option. You control how hard the game is in a lot of situations. When you first start the vanilla Elden Ring, you could go straight to Margit and not level up hardly at all. Or you could go around an entire limb grave, go to Kaelid, you know, uh, cheese the dragon, get engulfed, go go to the, the you know, the, uh, what is it, the fire mansion, and go get all kinds of runes and not even fight a boss. You could, like, run past the, the tree sentinels. You could skip all, You could skip all kinds of bosses in Elden Ring. So, again, it's all about player choice. Do you want to make the game as hard as possible, run straight to market? Or do you want to go farm runes? And it's, just, it's kind of like that too in the Shadow of Erdtree. Do you want to get blessings and level up your, your, your Shadow Realm blessings? Or do you want to just go straight to Mesmer, straight to Rolana and fight, you know, Rolana and Mesmer and Gaius? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of the same, same type of thing where you control the experience and the difficulty. So, no. No one should be dinging this game for the difficulty. No one should be complaining about the difficulty in any game, in my opinion. Because that's part of the game. That's what the developers want. Now, there is a caveat, okay? It's different if it's an MMO or a live service game. It's different because those games are meant to be, are meant to be adjusted for, you know, the average player. It's meant to have an equilibrium, okay? So that's a little bit different. So if it's Destiny... Wow, you know, ESO, um, you know, anything, anything that's like a live service game or like Diablo, it, it's, it's meant to be adjusted to the, to the middle of the road to where it pleases the most amount of players because it's a live service game and everyone expects that. You kind of expect that. It's a balance. And I'm not dinging Bethesda games either. When you play a Bethesda game, you're expecting to be able to save everywhere hundreds of times. That's part of the Bethesda experience. And in that game, you can also make it challenging by, you know, putting it on legendary mode, survival mode, survival, survival mode, or not doing saves at all. You can go through, you know, you could start a playthrough of Fallout, Starfield, etc., and not and and try to do a no save playthrough for the main quest line. People do it all the time in Skyrim and Fallout and Starfield. So again, that is on you. That is on player choice. But saving often is part of the Bethesda experience. Playing a live service game like Diablo 4. Balancing is part of the experience. You expect the game to be balanced. When you're playing a game like Elden Ring or DLC like Shadow of the Urtry, the expectation should be, this game is hard. It's not going to be adjusted for me. This game is just hard. And that's part of the fun. There are so many fun clips, and I'll have some myself. There's so many funny clips of dying in Elden Ring. If, you, if no one died in Elden Ring, the game would suck. The game would suck. It would not be fun if you did not die in that game. You would not have those fun experiences of, hey, I, this is my first time playing a Souls game. I just ran out, and the Tree Sentinel just you know, chopped my head off right, right out of the gate. You're like, what the hell? That's what happened to me, because Elden Ring was my first game. I went out to Limgrave. I'm like, well, let me see what this Dark Souls thing's all about. How, you know, how hard is this? And then I got demolished. And Margaret wrecked me. And then I realized, hey, dying is part of this game. And I'm not even like a Souls, Souls player. And I, even I know that. I'm an average to hardcore gamer. I would say I'm an average gamer because I play... I play certain games for a long amount of time, but I only play a couple a year. I don't play that many games per year. I am now with my YouTube channel playing a lot more games. But before that, I was just kind of average. But, you know, I'm, I probably put maybe 300 hours into Elden Ring. 
But like when when I first came out in Elden Ring, I was like, wow. And you know what? That first night, the first time I ever played Elden Ring, I spent 13 hours straight playing that game. I had never done that since since we're talking since like Oblivion or Fallout New Vegas. I have never played a game that long you know, to like that long in one one session and one gaming session since I don't know, the 2000s. So yeah, that that game was insane. So and then and this is going off a little bit on the side, but I will say too, the experience of Elden Ring, the first time you play it, is one of the best experience in gaming I've ever had in my life. We're talking like, hey, this is my first time turning on the SNES. This is my first time playing Mario. This is my first time playing Duck Hunt. I, I hear the PlayStation booting up for the first time, the original PlayStation. You know, I hear that booting up for the first time. Well, guess what? Playing Elden Ring for the first time is one of those gaming experiences. And if you are, if you are watching this video and you happen to see this and you haven't played Elden Ring, please do. Don't worry about, hey, it's it's so hyped up. I've seen too much of the gameplay. I don't want to play it. It's it's not for me. You know, not, just put that, put that out of your mind. No matter what kind of games you like, no matter what you do, play Elden Ring. You will not regret it, okay? It's going to be one of the best gaming experiences you've ever had. But expect to die. Yeah. All right, that's the video. Hope you liked it. We're on our way to 200 subs. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing. We're going to have, basically, this is going to be a gaming commentary RPG review channel kind of thing. I'm still kind of figuring out, getting my groove, you know, getting to where, hey, I have a steady upload of steady content and it's consistent. So I'm really liking the micro review reviews where I review certain bosses review certain mods. I'm really liking the micro reviews. What do you all think? Do you like these micro reviews that I'm doing? And do you like commentary like this? I'm hoping to do a mix. I'm hoping to do a mix of commentary on, on topics and stay positive and, you know, not do not negative farm, not rage bait farm. So I'm hoping to do commentary on topics and stay positive. And I'm hoping to continue with micro reviews because I think those are overlooked sometimes. Sometimes we have, you know, we don't need a review of the whole game. We already know we want to play it. We just want reviews on specific things. We just want reviews on specific things like paid mods. That's one of the reasons I did the pit do I'm doing the paid mod review and the boss review because Elden Ring bosses should have are enough to have their own review, right? So thanks for watching again, like subscribe. That is the video.